It's Friday, July 10th, and welcome to Boris's Best of British Bulletin. Boris Johnson nominated Chris Grayling to chair the Intelligence Committee. Yes, that Chris Grayling. The Chris Grayling who awarded a multi-million pound government ferry contract to a company without any ferries. Sources say that the MP formerly known as Failing Grayling plans to chair the Intelligence Committee without any intelligence. Matt Hancock said, I'm really pleased the domestic abuse bill has been passed a mere 12 hours after he'd voted against it. Well done, Matt. A SAGE official government scientific report said test and trace must be improved before schools were reopened. The following day, the education minister said he would fine parents who didn't send their kids to school. Just in case you are wondering, test and trace still isn't working. Senior police officers warned government lifting the lockdown was total madness. The chairman of the police federation said it's crystal clear that drunk people won't socially distance. The Texas Medical Association published a table of the 47 COVID riskiest activities. The most high risk was going to a bar. So our government tweeted, grab a drink, raise a glass, the pubs are opening. On the day, figures showed we had the third highest confirmed death toll in the world. Within days, three of those newly reopened bars had to shut the doors. As some thirsty punters who are asymptomatic COVID carriers became symptomatic, got tested, come back positive. <sighs> Boris Johnson said anyone who flouts COVID rules isn't just putting us all at risk, they're letting us all down. And then Boris Johnson's own father broke the rules to go to his villa in Greece. But since then, Boris Johnson has been strangely silent on the issue. And I'm sure I don't need to mention Dominic Cummings. But it's okay. Mark Francois mentioned Dominic Cummings for us all, warning an army general that Cummings is coming down to sort you out. Now, as you know, Cummings is highly trained in... well, I'm not sure exactly. But army generals are generally highly trained in... well... killing people! So I'm sure the general is shitting himself. Will it be on pay-per-view? Yes, we're talking about that Cummings, the Dominic Cummings, who was an unelected bureaucrat and ran a campaign against unelected bureaucrats. Brexit also promised an end to red tape, and Boris Johnson insisted emphatically that border checks in the Irish Sea would not happen. So you can imagine the reaction this week, when the details of additional red tape and Irish Sea border checks were revealed. The International Trade Secretary said, The plans risk smuggling, damage to the UK's international reputation and legal challenge from the World Trade Organization. And then she said we aren't ready for Brexit. So the government let the deadline for extending Brexit quietly slip past. Boris Johnson denied we were heading for a new deal, but said we would have an Australia-type deal. The EU <coughs> coughed and said, we do not have a deal with Australia. So that's a no deal then, Boris. Was that an oven-ready no deal? ONS figures showed no deal will cut the UK economy by 9.3%. That's on top of the predicted 14% slump caused by COVID-19. To save money, our canny government announced it would stop free parking for NHS staff, which annoyed NHS staff and saved almost nothing. Hours later, the government unannounced that particular idea and denied it had ever said it. How reassuringly competent. With more reassuring competence, the government announced a new policy of sanctions against regimes engaged in human rights violations. Literally the following day, the government announced it would resume arms sales to Saudi Arabia, despite acknowledging Saudi war crimes in the Yemen. But at least they were on the ball about PPE. We need all that, you know, to stay alive. Except the government is facing a string of legal challenges about why it awarded multi-million pound PPE contracts to, let's see, strange choices, which I'll discuss now. A £108 million contract awarded to a sweetie wholesaler with no experience of PPE and total assets of about £18,000, about the price of a mid-range Ford Fiesta. An £18 million contract for PPE awarded to an employment agency with total assets of £332. No, that's not a typo. A company worth £332 got £18 million. A £250 million contract to a London-based family office involved in offshore property and currency trading, which shares an advisor with Tory Minister Liz Truss. And in every case, no transparent bidding process. It's enough to make you chew your own foot off. But don't be too downhearted. It's the weekend. They could turn it all around in the next 24 hours. You wait and see. Next week will be amazing. 
<sighs> the aim of this vlog is to generate discussion, debate, maybe even a little argument. I believe civilized debate and argument generate the best ideas, the key word being civilized. I passionately believe in Scottish independence, but there are people who do not. Being a unionist is a legitimate position. I will not tolerate abuse, threats of any nature, sexism, racism or any other badisms being directed toward myself or other participants, whichever side of the debate they're coming from. Keep the debate on topic, civil and impersonal, and this should be a good forum for discussion. The page is mine, it carries my name, and I will be the sole arbiter of what is acceptable on it and what is not. I will censor delete comments or block independent supporters just as quickly as I would a unionist who can't or won't play nicely. Cheers, David.